Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, five Sauvignon Blancs in front of me, uh, three from South Africa, two from New Zealand. So I'm doing South Africa, New Zealand, South Africa, New Zealand, South Africa... That's it, isn't it? Oh, that's five. Anyway, better start. Uh, first one I have from South Africa, uh, Zuttendal uh, Sauvignon 2011 from Elim, uh, which is uh, down in the south of South Africa. And uh, give it a whirl. There's a very pungent, grassy character coming through here. Um, and slightly armpit-like um, and uh, slightly on that green pepper edge. Uh, I'm just wondering whether it's uh, one of those where they've picked it up a little bit too early in, in order to keep some freshness and that green pepper edge uh, says to me that some bits of it haven't ripened as fully as uh, I would like them to have done. It's a style that some people love. Um, personally, it doesn't do much for me. Um, yes, as I say, this green pepper, um, it's like elderflower, some citrus, uh, and this smokiness, and that, that speaks to me a bit of, of, of under-ripeness, uh, almost as if they've got, um, they've got, what, got, got something that's, that, that, that um, I don't know, is it young vines? Is it something where it's a hot bit of elim? Because there are cool bits of elim, uh, and there's warm bits, and yeah, I'm just wondering whether they're somewhere slightly too warm and have picked a little bit too early. It's okay. Next one. Uh, so we're in New Zealand now with Harvey Nichols. Uh, their own label Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc made for them by Arnsfield Estates. Let's try this. Straight down the line Kiwi Sauvignon. Um, actually better than that. It's, um, it's, it's got this gooseberries, it's got the asparagus, it's got um, some of the citrus and lemon, but it's also got this fresh herby edge as well. Um, feels like there's going to be a bit of stony mineral character to it. To it too, not to it. Oh, shut up. It's tasty stuff actually. Um, I like its juiciness, I like this um, full rounded flavour and just when you think it's going to go that a little bit too fat then it tapers off and uh, get this nice clean finish. So I'm getting as well as those things I was talking about before, the citrus and uh, the herb, there's almost like a rhubarb edge coming through. Um, and uh, yeah, rhubarb plum, uh, one of those uh, summer, early summer fruit crumbles. Tasty wine, yeah I enjoy that. Next one, we are back in South Africa with Groot Post. 2011 Sauvignon, and the, the region here is Darling, so let's give this a whirl. Well, this smells good too, but it's a different style from, actually a different style from both of them. Um, it's half a degree higher in alcohol than the, the Zotendal was, uh, and I don't get any of that green pepper character coming through. Maybe there's a little bit of it lurking in the background, but more I get this lemony herb character. Compared with the Harvey Nichols one, which was had more, more exuberant fruit, this one feels uh, more stern and upright, and uh, despite being the highest alcohol, feels like it's going to be, uh, yeah, probably the crispest of the three. And that's good too. Really interesting seeing the difference in styles between those two. Uh, this one is sort of like a bit of an enthusiastic crowd pleaser. Um, and this one, yeah, a bit more restrained, a bit more, yeah, maybe a bit more Loire-like um, than the, um, uh, the New Zealand style of the one from New Zealand. I know what I mean. Um, but um, yeah, I like them both. And uh, I just, yeah, wines for different occasions. Uh, next one, uh, well we've got the, those are all 2011, uh, next two are 2010 and uh, so the first one I'll do is um, Tamata Cape Crest Sauvignon from Hawke's Bay in uh, New Zealand. Now one of the unusual things that you'll see about this is uh, very rare for a New Zealand Sauvignon, it's got a cork in. Well we're in a different uh, world of Sauvignon and probably should have done this last because I stick my nose in there and the first thing I see is uh, that smokiness and toastiness of, uh, of barrel fermentation and then I pick it up and says on, it says on the back um, barrel fermented with a touch of Sauvignon and Sauvignon Gris. So the model here is is white Bordeaux um, and it's got those smells of white Bordeaux. It's got that, uh, yes, that, that smoky tinned pear character um, and uh, it feels like it's going to be deeper. Uh, it's, it's funny, when you put a wine in a barrel it becomes less exuberantly fruity but uh, extra layers come out of it. Let's see if extra layers come out of this one. Well, the oak, uh, as well as giving that toasty character, um, it's also rounding out the flavour. So you're getting a big, bigger, fleshier style. So um, yes, there's still this, this what I call the green flavours, but it's uh, not maybe so much the citrus. It's more on the ripe apple, a uh, bit of green gauge in there, 
and um, it, 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 what I, I like particularly about it is the length. It's uh, as if the extra year um, in bottle and also the, the time in barrel has uh, just softened some of the angularity of the fruit, uh, but uh, then things like the Semillon and the Sauvignon Gris have added a little bit bit more matière. So you're left with, um, uh, yes, yeah, some, some, some uh, Kiwi Sauvignons when they're, they're two years old, uh, they're a bit, um, they've gone a bit weird and peapoddy. Here it's in its uh, still a very interesting state and still feels young. It feels like it's got uh, another two or three years ahead of it at least. Good wine, uh, interesting, and for people who, um, uh, who, want, who, who get bored with Sauvignon, a really good place to go after they've got bored. Next one. Um, uh, Seven Springs Sauvignon Blanc 2010. I have a feeling I've done this wine in one of these videos before, because um, um, they, they, they sent me some uh, Syrah. I think the Syrah was pretty good, and the, the two Chardonnays as well, they were good too, but I think there was a space in the box, so they shoved a bottle of, uh, of the Sauvignon in there too. Uh, and from what I remember, this, this is, uh, they're, they're in the um, um, Overberg region, uh, and uh, the vineyards I think are very, very close to, um, there's a really good winery called Iona, uh, I think pretty close to those, and I think this wine was actually made in the same cellars as Iona. I think, I think they've got their own winery now, not sure, I could be wrong. Perky, sappy, green apple, uh, a bit of rhubarb, a bit of plum, um, and um, it's, it's fascinating this. It's, um, um, it, I suppose uh, it sits halfway between the group post and the Harvey Nichols. It's got the, uh, uh, it feels like it's got the backbone and um, upright, stern mineral quality of the group post and some of that more exuberant fruit that you get in the Harvey Nichols one. Um, it smells good. Oh, I like that. Um, what I, it's almost it, if I if I think of the Harvey Nichols with with its rounded, rich, juicy fruit, and then the group post with a more stern, upright backbone. It's got both of the elements of those, um, but uh, then it's also got this uh, something like a, a Macon Chardonnay in there. It's a juicy, slightly cooked um, apple crumble edge. If you know, if you know, imagine a crumble, you've got the layer on the top where it's gone really hard, and you've got but you've got that that bit where the fruit meets the crumble, and the, some of the the crumble mix got in with the fruit juice it's got some of that eggy flowery bit cool, yeah um, a slightly undercooked cake mix um, and what's interesting for me is um, uh, I was saying about some uh, some New Zealand Sauvignons at two years old uh, are starting to look a bit a bit weird um, I, my, the South African ones actually seem to have a little bit more life built into them I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm generalizing here but uh, I remember going away for, on, on holiday having tasted um, a large row of, of Sauvignons from South Africa and just leaving them out in the kitchen and coming back two weeks later not much had gone from each of the bottles and tasting them all again um, and um, they, were, they were they were hanging in pretty well and uh, I, I was really impressed so um, I, I don't think the Zotendal is ever going to shed that uh, green pepper edge but here uh, I think this one uh, looking good at two years old I don't think it's going to go on quite as much as the uh, Temata is but uh, certainly if you've got a bottle of this and uh, uh, you have to keep it for another 18 months it's not going to fall apart when is it at its best that's up to you, dear watcher, to decide. It's, uh, you get into your personal preferences. I think that this is looking pretty smart today, and um, I don't think there'll be very much of that come left come the end of the evening. See you soon.